Hello everyone, welcome back to Stuart Technologies. In today's video, I'll be going over how I created this Wi-Fi controlled LED lamp that I call the Emotion Lamp. Huge thanks to PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video, for providing me with the PCBs for this project. More on that later in the video. The Emotion Lamp is an ESP8266 powered lamp that can be controlled through either the touch button on the top of the lamp or the Android app I created. I came up with the idea for this lamp after seeing those long distance friendship lamps on sites like Amazon and Wish. The Emotion Lamp is meant to be made in pairs, with one lamp being gifted to someone else. You can use the app or the touch button to control one or both of the lamps simultaneously. Setting a specific color on the lamp can be used to signify an emotion like happiness or sadness. It can also be a fun and wholesome way to let someone know you're thinking of them. If you'd like more detailed instructions about how to build the Emotion Lamp, there's a post on my website that goes into more detail than I do in this video on how to build everything. The link to it can be found in the description below. To make the Emotion Lamp, you'll need an ESP-based microcontroller, more specifically the D1 Mini if you plan on following my build guide exactly. You'll also need a strip of NeoPixel LEDs, this IC for level shifting, a capacitive touch button, a 470 ohm resistor, a power switch, power jack, a 5 volt 4 amp power supply, and either perf board or this custom PCB to assemble everything on. The circuit for the lamp is very simple. The microcontroller drives the LED strip with the help of the level shifting IC, which bumps the logic level from 3.3 volts to 5 volts. The capacitive touch button is connected to pin D0 as an input, and is powered through the 3.3 volt output on the D1 Mini. Since the circuit isn't too complicated, you could certainly assemble everything together on a piece of perf board like I did for the first version of this lamp. But now, I decided instead to go for a more polished look by designing a custom PCB, thanks to this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers PCB manufacturing and assembly. You can get 10 two-layer boards for as low as $5, and new PCBWay members get a $5 coupon for their first order. That basically means you can get 10 PCBs for free on your first order. They also offer a bunch of other services such as 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. To learn more, you can visit PCBWay.com. The link to it can be found in the description below. For the enclosure, I knew I wanted it to be both simple yet aesthetically pleasing. So I went into Fusion 360 and messed around until I had something I liked. The enclosure is broken into three main parts. The bottom stand has a cutout for the power switch and power jack to fit into. On the inside, there are four holes that take M3 inserts in order to secure the PCB to the stand. The holes on the outer rim take M3 inserts too and hold the LED stand in place. The LED stand comes in two variations. The first one is meant to be used with a full LED strip that just gets wrapped around it in a spiral and secured in place. The second variation has slots to hold individual strips of LEDs instead. This variation requires more effort during assembly since you have to cut and solder the strips together. But the end result looks much better than the spiraled LED strip. Lastly, we have the lamp cover that slots into the LED stand to cover the LED strips. It has a spot for the capacitive touch button to be mounted in place. This piece is meant to be printed in transparent filament to allow the LEDs to shine through nicely. With the enclosure design complete and the PCBs in hand, it's now time to print everything out, assemble the circuit, and put everything together.
The software for the lamp is a bit complex, so I'll only go over the important parts now. For a full explanation, you can check out the post on my website linked in the description below. The lamp has seven states, each of which correspond to a pattern the lamp can display. These states are off, solid, stripes, gradient, moving gradient, breathing, and rainbow. On startup, the lamp connects to the configured Wi-Fi network and then attempts to connect to the configured MQTT broker. Once connected, it subscribes to the appropriate topics and waits until it receives a message on that topic. The messages are structured in JSON and contain the desired state for the lamp along with the color or colors for that state in either RGB or HSV format. In addition to that, the capacitive touch button is used in conjunction with the one button library to perform certain actions on a single, double, and long press. To control the lamp, I've set the double press to turn it on and off, the single press to send the current state to the pair lamp, and a long press to cycle through the preset colors. For finer control over the colors and patterns, you can use the Android app I developed. As of this video's release, the app is still a work in progress. Right now, it allows you to control both lamps by setting them to any color or pattern combination you can think of. I'm still working on polishing the app and adding in a few more features, so be sure to check my website for the latest updates. The Emotion Lamp was a fun project to work on. It's a nice change of pace from the projects that I normally do. If you like seeing smaller projects like this mixed in with larger projects like the robot arm, please let me know in the comment section down below along with any ideas for future videos that you'd like to see. If you make your own Emotion Lamp, I'd love to see it. You can tag me in photos on Twitter and Instagram. Link to both of those will be in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend and make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.